people uh, log on here. It'll just be a moment. I wanted to see why we were um, doing this. Rachel, could I get, how long have you been in the business? I've been in real estate a little over four years now. Great. Have you been on with David the whole time? Yes. Great. And how about Jackie? Um, I've been like three and a half and it'll be like two and a half, three with you. Yeah. Love it. I did like eight months on my own and then went to him. Love it, love it, love it. Same with Antoinette. She was on, you were solo for what? Nine? For like eight or nine. Oh, not even. I think like six or seven. And then I joined with you. So it's been almost two years, but a year since I've been with you guys. Yeah. I love it. Excellent. Is Jeanette? I'm sorry. Antoinette. <laughs> What'd you say? Antoinette. For like Marie Antoinette, but without the talk. Got it, got it, got it. That's what I say. All right. Well, I appreciate y'all doing what it takes to get here. It's, it's, uh, I know it's, um, it is a slammed market right now. So even peeling five minutes away is very difficult. So, uh, we are recording today and, um, as I said, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. I know we've got a lot we'd like to cover. And, um, and, uh, I realized, I think Lee Fun, thank you for alerting me that there was an incorrect link in one of the emails yesterday. And so it's amazing. I keep all the links straight. They're pretty consistent, but that must've been a copy and paste. So sorry about that. I'm glad you got here. And, um, was that from the text or the email Lee? Doesn't matter. I was just wanting to correct it wherever it was. So it was in the email I, from my email. Right? I put a link in the Facebook group though. Thank you. Cool. All right. So, uh, so today I have, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and share screen here just so you can get, uh, why we get everybody started today is, um, are you seeing my screen here? <laughs> Today's the Urban Team Showdown. Can you all see that? Thumbs up. Perfect. Excellent. Well, it's uh, Urban versus Urban. And um, I don't think we've ever done quite, quite this quite like this. But uh, this, uh, what I'd love to do is a no holds bar. Uh, teams tell all. Uh, we'll make the team leader step out of the room so you can tell us what you really think. And then, uh, and then we'll have a team meeting, a debrief, and an intervention uh, if anybody wants to stick around for the after hours. So um, feel free to start drinking uh, or plan a team happy hour for after this, uh, this honest, uh, the honest truth here. I was um, putting together just some quick notes here. I know you all have broader teams. Uh, why don't we start with uh, Urban Nashville, which is David Doris and his team. Uh, obviously, David, you've done this a long time. Give me the makeup of your team as far as you're obviously the team leader. How many people and what are their roles on your team? So we have seven people. Um, we don't have really roles like buyer's agent, uh, listing agent, anything really. We just kind of everybody is trying to grow their businesses. Um, we do have some development stuff. And so in that way, different people run the developments. Um, and so I guess th those would be some specific uh, spots where they really have a name, like Alyssa runs Hamilton and Martin and uh, Riverwalk and Allison has run uh, Silo, Silo House, Silo Park, and now Silo West. Lots of Silo, like it. And then do you have any uh, what, admin or marketing support? Yeah, Lana is our um, contract to close and admin support and she's in the office with us. Excellent, okay full time with you, right? Yes. All right. And, uh, urban outfitters, house fitters, all the fitters. <laughs> Tell us uh, your team structure, number of people and, and roles. Um, we're very similar in structure. We, we have, um, Haley who is runs our contract to close and kind of serves, um, as our catch all team mom. Um, she she works remotely in Mississippi. She used to be uh, in the office, but they moved. And then 
um, you know, no defined buyer's agent or specific roles within the agents on the team. It's very similar. You know, I'm here to help them grow their business and yeah. uh, be a support to them. And, you know, they list, they buy, they can do all kinds of stuff. Love it. Love it. Awesome. Very cool. We're going to start with, uh, we're going to start with team members today. So uh, we'll go, we'll bounce around here. And uh, if you have questions, put it in the chat and um, uh, I'm going to bring it back to just our, our view here. So first um, let's start with uh, how about um, uh, Alyssa with Urban Nashville. What are two of the best things you've experienced from working on your team? Um, I really like the, how it's like motivation driven. Like you want to like show your value on the team. So you push yourself harder, but then there's also like the camaraderie part where, you know, you have like that support when you need it and you can bounce ideas back and forth. So you grow on that end too. So. Awesome. I feel like I'm on the dating game. Allison, same question. Um, <laughs> So I would say a lot of the same, like I, I'm a very like team oriented person. I like being around these guys. If I didn't, I probably wouldn't have stuck around, but yeah, it's super like, it, it's competitive in a way that I think I personally need. Like we all have to bring something to the table. Um, and it just kind of gives me that extra like competitive edge push that I need. So I, I like that. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> yeah, we're all super competitive. <laughs> It's good. No, I appreciate you sharing these things. This is what we, this is what people need to know, right? Because I think a lot of times, either probably yourselves included, right? We either started teams or got on teams and it was an organic thing. We didn't necessarily, we had to kind of figure it a lot of things out. And so you all, both of your teams have been very successful, uh, have long-term, uh, you've, you've had great uh, retention and staying together. And um, how about the house fitters team? What are some things that you've experienced, some of the best things working on that team? For me personally, um, like when I was giving birth last year, um, David was stepping in the same day, writing an offer, <laughs> writing an offer for me. So I was able to, you know, be in the moment and know that my clients were getting taken care of. Same thing with when I was going, uh, having my wedding and went on a honeymoon, I was able to, you know, actually spend in the moment during those times and um, I knew that all my clients were taken care of and my emails were being monitored because I feel like in this business you're self-employed and you don't get you know paid maternity leave or true vacations without checking your emails so uh, especially during those two moments I did get like real time that you, you don't ever get back and I knew that my business was still up and running and I didn't have to, to second guess it for one second that they weren't being taken care of. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very important. Anything else to add? Yeah. I mean, I just want to piggyback off of Rachel. Like, Please. I think it, a new thing or a unique thing about our team is that um, they have autonomy to do what they want to do. But I think I'm, I'm pretty plugged into what they have going on where if they need to check out or um, have to check out, you know, our systems are in place and I have that kind of working knowledge where I can step in for them and take care of that. And also like, you know, we're always looking at ways to, to get to the goal line a little quicker, a little more efficiently. And so we're always bouncing ideas off the strategies of how to do that with clients and whatever problems are out there. Thanks Dave for sharing that. Cause I think it's, it's important. So many teams run different ways and I have, um, I of course run a team and, and I've, I've um, coached and consulted with other teams and I've tried to just immerse myself in, in different models. And um, I think the way you two run your teams is, is a little different than some of the more rigid models that I've seen, um, especially fairly prevalent in Keller Williams or maybe other places like that. So, awesome. Um, hey, I was just through. gonna, Teddy, if I could just say real quick, I was in another link from this morning. There were like 15 of us in there. Um, I think that some, anyway, I don't see any of those people in here. So I don't know if they just dropped it or what. So I need to send out, I need to send out a clearly a new link. And um, uh, let's see here. I'm going to, and I appreciate the heads up on that. 
So I can send out a quick text with the accurate link. And um, I pr so appreciate that. While oh, I'm I just didn't see any of them here. I just came into my calendar and linked onto this one. And it happened to work, but just FYI. Thank you so, so much. Okay. Really, 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 because I clearly uh, made an error here. And um, so I'll work on getting, uh, getting that new message out to everyone. And um, I had it correct in the link, it looks like, but, um, or in the text. But of course, um, I'm sure some people use email. While we're doing that, um, uh, David Doris, could you share how long did you sell before your first hire? And what, um, yeah, how, how, how long did you sell before your first hire? And why did you start a team? What, what, what did you see as the advantage of that? So it was like four years. I was on Mark's team when I first started and then uh, Brian Stoltzfus and Chad Wollers and I decided to team up and we hired an assistant and we really just did it to kind of work through the ebbs and flows of our business. Uh, so that team was totally different model, but we just kind of shared everything and um, we did that for two years. And then after that kind of went our separate ways. And at that point was when I really started uh, what we have now and and that's been a little different setup it's always been a different setup along the way so then brent mcpherson uh and i teamed up and then allison came on after that and it just kind of has grown from there gotcha and what do you think are the best skills you see in i'm going to say buyer's agent let's just go with that in in that respect because that's a lot of time when some of the early roles in a team is getting some coverage on the buyer side. What are some of the best skills you see in that role? Uh, my team, I think it's just the being hungry and, you know, staying on top of it uh, with buyers. Buyers need a lot of handholding and, you know, they see a house they like and then they want to go see it immediately. And so you got to really be on it to take care of buyers. That's where the team is really helpful. Even like Rachel was saying it, you can just cover for each other. A lot of least, one or two people on the team kind of know the story of who kind of everybody's working with. And so everybody has the person that they're willing to pass off to when they go out of town or, um, or unavailable for a couple of days. And so that's a nice thing I think with the team is just having that coverage. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, I think the, uh, the hunger is an important piece, David, uh, Mr. Binkley, what would you say are a couple of important things, or best skills? Well, um, I've noticed in them, that they're, I would say, much more equipped to work with the needs and, and wants of a buyer. I'm just not really a patient guy. And I get frustrated <laughs> with people that can't see the forest through the trees or the house they need to buy if it slapped them in the face. And they, they, you know, just have a different skill set than I, than I do that brings a little balance. And, um, we always play the good cop, bad cop, like they're, you know, especially with other agents, like they're very sweet and diplomatic and I'm the hammer when that doesn't work, you know? So it's, it's, uh, I think it's balance is the skill set that they bring to the team. And, um, I'm very tilted in one direction and they, they balance that out. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Patience, balance, and hunger. Any other, any other skills from our, from our team members or things that you think that, that help you be, uh, be great at what you do? Um, I think that that's how, like when I very first started, I came to David and I was like, Hey, I'm, I'm quitting my job. I'm doing this. I don't know what I'm doing. So I need you to mentor me. And so he really did take me under his wing, especially my first year. And we had a rock star year my first year. And normally it's the opposite uh, when you're first getting started in real estate. So, um, you know, after that, by my second year, I was like, oh, okay, this kind of feels like what my first year probably should have felt like. So it was good to like lean on him during those times of like trying to ramp up and, and really get my business started. Cause I, I did start out just as a buyer's agent so, um, you know, having that, I've been able to evolve now going into my fourth year, 
of having like listings and my own stuff going on. And so like he was saying, he's, he's, he was always the bad cop, especially in my first couple of years, but he's taught me how to be like, be that way. So he'll, we'll have a conversation before I have a tough negotiation with a client and he'll pump me up, give me pointers and things like that. And so now I have that skill set that makes me better. I love it. You know, I think something I heard in what you're sharing is humility in that I think a lot of times what I've experienced is a lot of realtors are very ego driven. You know, we're, they're used to working for ourselves. We chose this career for a lot of reasons in that, and that it um, allowed us for a lot of things, but in working in a team, right? It's not about, it's not about my name or me being on the sign or standing in the awards. It's not about that. I've always said the rewards, my checkbook and, and happy clients. I don't need all the rest of that stuff, right? So just giving uh, a chance for everybody to learn from each other. Awesome. Thank you, Rachel. What would somebody, what should somebody not expect? Let's go back over to the uh, urban team, the urban Nashville. Um, what should somebody not expect from working on a team or things that you've, you've recognized that some hires maybe didn't work out or people, I think some people want to come on a team. Anybody on the urban Nashville or all of you, what should someone not expect from working on a team? I think just like easy leads, like leads aren't just going to keep on coming that you don't have to work for. You have to kind of build your business and then use the team to your advantage and then help in the same aspect. It's not just like a one way street. So yeah, I think a lot of people like when they think about like coming on a team or, you know, I'm going to get my license and get on a team that it's kind of this like free ride or you jump on and do, you know, this or that, but it's not that. I hate to break that to some people. <laughs> it's still a lot of fun and like we love it, but it's very much like we were kind of saying, like you build your business to prove yourself. And then I think along the way, like you get opportunities based on, you know, the what you're showing the team you have. So yeah, there's a lot of back end work that goes into being on a team that a lot don't see. Yeah, I agree with that. I think there is an expectation for leads or in our case, we do a lot of development stuff and it's like, oh, I'm just, I want to be on a development. And um, Allison and Alyssa were on the team for a while and then have really earned those positions and are really good at what they do. And so it's not just something that they just walked into and got handed. Um, they earned it and, you know, we have to represent our seller and got to make sure that we're putting the right people on the bus to get it to the finish line. And so our sellers, really like both of them too so that's like a big part of it it's not just oh here this person's coming on we're putting them on the development yeah uh house fitters anything so you had to add something these people shouldn't expect i mean i just want to piggyback off what Alyssa said i mean it um to use kind of like a, a lion analogy like i don't want like zoo lions so to so to speak like uh, don't expect to be fed like you're coming here to learn and hunt and kill and you know the benefit is like we're gonna have greater success hunting as a pack and taking that down and um, so it's it's not you're gonna pick up a lot more than business uh, you're gonna learn things you're gonna escalate your career a lot faster I mean you know, everybody here has been in the business less than five years, but they operate like 10 year pros. I totally agree. Yeah. I always said when I started, you know, and I, I, you know, I basically just started working for seven bucks an hour doing all the grunt work and helping Bobby and Jen and whoever I could. And, and that's, I thought the best way to learn. I mean, everyone, when I was running a team and had team members, they were they were all doing very well in their first year. And it wasn't because I was just handing them leads. In fact, it was no, it was teaching them how to, to run and operate a business. And like you say, all those other ancillary benefits grow, but I love the lion or the pack mentality because I really do believe there's, there's, there's power in numbers and people give, it builds instant credibility in that, you know, you have a team. What are some other things from, um, um, let's go with uh, Mr. Doris here. What's uh, what's the biggest challenge about running a team? I'm sitting in the middle. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, no, I mean, you know, we all have different personalities. We're all competitive and sometimes there are misunderstandings and just 
communicating, I think. I think that's something that we're constantly working on, but uh, everyone realizes that when we communicate, you don't hold those grudges or get as frustrated maybe about something. And so that uh, those type of things are, are the toughest part of it. It's like, why didn't I get that? Or why didn't this work out? And yeah, uh, just talking through it. So yeah, true. Binkley, how about you? Same thing. It's, it's just navigating personal relationships. We're all very good friends and but also you know there's the daily conversation of money opportunities and stress how to handle that did you know did I listen well enough was I sympathetic enough or the other way around I'm like are you listening like are you following what we're supposed to be doing and like it gets sensitive like so um just navigating the, that dynamic is kind of the challenge. Yeah, I think managing people is what I heard in that. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, not, it's not that you're, you are operate hierarchy teams, but it's just you are sort of in the driver's seat to kind of make sure everybody in the car is getting along. <laughs> the road gets long. Yeah. Uh, if you could go back when you started selling, David, and built your team, what would you do differently that you now know? Mm. Um, be like I've had two team members that didn't really fit in especially one and <laughs> don't laugh too hard um, and I've just been a little more discriminating and um, in who I brought on yeah um, yeah not That's really into it like it, it has to be a hell yes you know if it's not a hell yes then it's a hell no that's god i can echo that that would be my answer to that too. <laughs> it's just this hires right like i mean yeah. i think i was i was trained you know uh it's slow to hire quick to fire and unfortunately i think sometimes as a team leader we're we're in the weeds when we decide to make that hire and we're a little reactive and uh, rather than proactive how about you mr doris what would you uh what would you do differently or do you know now? I mean, I, th- I think that who you bring on and we're trying out different strategies with that, kind of letting other people on the team interview and seeing if it's a fit more than maybe just me making that decision. Um, I want everybody's input, but that's taken time to get there from the trust side and uh, on all sides, I think for me and for people on the team, wanting someone else on the team. And then uh, for me, like letting that go and really hearing out, you know, the negatives, cause I can get real excited about stuff. I mean, I'm a sales guy, so uh, I can get excited about people over a coffee and then be wrong, uh, so. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right, let's go back to team members. What, um, what keeps you with a team? House fitters, what, what keeps you on your team or a team? Um, I'll say just, I mean, I feel like the days where you're not feeling like you can push yourself, you have these people around you that are driven. And, you know, if I feel like I'm having a slow week or month or whatever, I look at Rachel, I look at Jackie, I look at David, and it pushes me. So, I mean, just the group setting in general works well for me because I feel like it hypes me up a little bit. Um, And I mean, I've been on the team for a year. I feel like I've learned more just kind of sitting in the room, even if I have nothing going on, especially in the very beginning, um, just listening to them. So that's been super helpful for me and it makes me stick around and I like them, so. (laughs) Love it. Yeah, I would also add on just David's allowed us to evolve because there's definitely been times where I've questioned like, should I stay on the team or should I go off and do my own thing or whatever. Um, but he's really like allowed me to just keep doing business how I want to do business, but still like be a huge uh, crunch to lean on and like home inspections. He has mm-hmm. always come through with me on like helping me navigate through some really difficult home inspections or low appraisals or whatever, like really tough situations because he's been in the business for over 15 years. So he's, you know, kind of seen and done it all. And he's able to share that knowledge with me 
And also like what Antoinette said, like when I was very first getting started, just hearing him on the phone and how he was like hammering like lenders or, you know, other people, other um, agents on the other side, they, it just taught me like, I, I need to be like that when I'm on the phone and just mannerisms, even like the smallest things. To, I love like hearing people talk about hearing people on the phone. Um, that's a huge thing. And that's why I, that like, we have desk in this office. Like I want them here. I want them hearing how things go down. Cause like when I first came to village in, um, 2009 or so, um, I would move around the building just to hear who I could hear on the phone, whether it was Newell or, um, Doris Stoltzman and Stoltzfus and Chad, like just, yakking at people or just hearing how people interact with the other person on the phone and um you know ted off right next to you for a while and just hearing that you know i think that's important where you can pick up ideas and phrases and just mindsets approach that type of thing yeah love it uh urban nashville Alyssa or allison what keeps you on the team David's not listening, so just uh, say some good things, and uh, we'll we'll ask why you're going to leave one day. But yeah. we'll just leave that. Actually, right now. <laughs> um, kind of going off what Rachel said, like David's really hands on, and Elsa and I and the whole team are kind of just working on our own business. But it's good to like know if we need some help, he's there. He's like ready to get on the phone and like talk through some things, and he can really talk through anything. <laughs> So it's like, here's the phone, just help me out. Um, but also like you want to grow and I feel like to grow, you surround yourself with people that are like minded, but also pushing you to be better. Um, so that's why I stay on. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I kind of echo what everybody's said a little bit, not to bore everyone, um, but this is my fifth year on this team and I was on a different team for two years before that and just thinking about like the value that I have you know gotten from listening yeah listening to him on the phone listening to Alyssa she's really good on the phone too and just like um yeah what you gather from being around people day after day after day and that's you know same thing as Binkley said I used to sit back in that little like hallway when I first started in 2012 and I would like I would listen to you Binkley I'd listen to you and just whoever was like back there um so I think, yeah, if somebody's listening on here that just like kind of wants that, I would say, well, not now because there's not a ton of people in the office, but um, just get into the office and kind of listen around because that's truly like one of the most helpful things. Yeah. yeah, I think you learn too from a deal. You learn so much from just doing one deal and when you're getting started and then once you've done 10, you've learned so much more. And so if you can be a part of other people's deals and learn in those moments, then it's like you've done 50 deals and you've really only done five and then you just, your confidence grows and your ability to work through some situation grows. So um, team or no team, I think it, it's really important to be around as many deals and see as much as you can because it, it helps your business. Yeah, mm -hmm. like being around them, you kind of learn like their tendencies, what works and doesn't work. And sometimes I like channel different people for different situations. Like I always tell Allison when I'm with the buyer, cause I'm not super patient, but when I'm with the buyer, I like channel Allison cause she just like has it down or like developments like David could just like go around a whole condo building and like sell everything in like a day. So you just yeah. kind of yeah. learn from people. Yeah. Draw from each other's confidence. Yeah. Yep. Do you, um, do you all do a sales meeting? And if so, what things do you cover in that? Or how do you, how do you stay in, touch with each other or having this COVID time? We haven't been, we were doing it for a minute. We keep dropping off. That's something I'd like to do better. Uh, but we just, we communicate a lot as it is. So I feel like we all kind of know what's going on um, with each other, but it would probably be good to, to get together a little bit more and have a little more structure to it. We almost come into the office every day. So like being face to face is big for us, but it's not always easy to set aside a time where we're all like dedicated to that time. So just we've tried that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in <work>. passing. <laughs> How about you, Binkley, your team? Same. We try to have our team meeting like right after the sales meeting. 
Um, and for whatever reason, sometimes that gets pushed. Like I like it to be the entire team. So when it's looking like that may not happen, uh, I try to jump on calls and just get plugged into their business, understand their pipeline and where their sticky points are with deals that are under contract or clients that are dragging feet for whatever reason, just kind of, you know, seeing how I can help out there, but we try to, sometimes it doesn't happen. Um, but again, like urban yeah, national, twice a month. yeah and we're about twice a month, but, um, we're, we're back and forth on the phone a great deal. Well, both of your teams are, you guys are in the, on the court, you know, you're playing the game. You're not in the locker room, just strategizing and doing meetings. I know none of you are really big on, on wasted time or meetings. And so I love that it's, you guys are out, you're out doing it. So what, um, what's something you want to implement on your team Binkley that you haven't yet? Ooh. Um, or anyone on, on the house fitters team, is there something you all, this is your time to tell them passively. <laughs> well, what, what do we want? I think just, I mean, what we're pushing right now is um, kind of our going through our hitting our leads really hard. We, we do um, pay-per-click lead gen and um, it's tough because it's very, it feels like we're flipping over a million rocks to find one crawdad, so to speak. That sound like a country bumpkin. That's the first thing popped in mind, but um, but it works. And um, I, you know, I, I harp on them a lot about it, and I don't do it. So finally, I was like, you know what? I need to do it. I need to lead by example and see what this is about. But it's been really successful. Like I know both of you guys have had one closing that flourished into many and will continue to do so. And, you know, if, you know, sometimes you got to kiss a hundred frogs to find a prince, not yeah. to keep going into cliches, but uh, you know, that's what we're trying to get into right now. And also be better about um, our media and how we present ourselves as a team and image. So that's something that we're expanding into now as well. Nice. Anything else from Antoinette, Jackie, or, or Rachel? What are your rocks that you all are challenges that you either individually or you see as a team that you all are working through? I would say for, for me is like still um, like branding, like with the team, but also individually with clients, um, you know, cause sometimes it's a little confusing when you introduce yourself, like, Hey, I'm Rachel and I work with the urban house fitters. They're like, well, does that mean I'm working with like five other people or am I just working with you? How does that work? So um, just trying to be upfront, like, Hey, you're just going to be working with me, but I have the support. So if I do go out of town, you have these people as backups or if we're in a tough negotiation spot, I have backups. And we also have a team manager that helps with all the paperwork and making sure we get from contract to close. And so just um, being able to still be an individual, but while also branding yourself like with the team is um, been challenging, but also rewarding at the same time. So we're also like trying to like market ourselves like, you know, as that. Love it. Do you charge a retainer fee? Yes. Like that's, you know, that's their responsibility to lock that down. If they don't, they take care of it. Um, so, but yeah. Good to know. Cool. Uh, Urban Nashville, Bankley's team, uh, excuse me, Doris's team. What are some rocks that uh, you all are working on or challenges uh, that are in your business? Uh, I mean, I think our marketing, both Allison and Alyssa have expressed, you know, wanting to be better at that. And we're starting down that path of what we should do and uh, just kind of spending some time in that space to understand what we think is going to be most valuable and what we um, could do to portray the team um, out there. Because it's like Rachel saying, it can, can become confusing, but at the end of the day, it really is helpful to your client to have uh, multiple people so that nothing slips through the cracks and so that people can see the houses when they want to see them and 
uh, just being able to explain all that to people uh, through our marketing and just getting kind of our pitch down on that. Do you do any, um, what's your, what's your method of lead gen? Do you do any pay-per-click or is it primarily sphere referrals or? Yeah, it's just, we don't do, um, we don't go hunting for crowd ads. Uh, <laughs> we really just do referrals and then just, we've been fortunate to put developments together and, um, work in those and creating leads off of those. And we just need, we need to do better of following up, I think on the developments after we get done with them, which is something we're working on. But, um, sometimes. I know that, uh, I know that, uh, the, the, t the sales team at Icon, that was one of the early models, was Bristol on Broadway and Icon. I mean, Zach Goodyear and Scott and Ivy, they hit those development leads hard. You know, that was part of the reason to, to even if you didn't represent the buyer, right? You just represent the development, but those people get on the database and you follow up with those people because, you know, and they know people, know people, know people. I always say, like, I don't care if one person comes to the open house and they never buy, they know somebody who will. And so it's really about, uh, what do you use for a uh, CRM? We just use Google Sheets. Excellent. And you house fitters, what do you use for a CRM? Um, CRM called a uh, FirePoint. You like it? Yeah, we're, all, we're always open to options, you know. You've been on that platform for a while though, I know. Yeah, I think three we're years. We're on follow up also for that. Yeah. But and, I like uh, PowerPoint way better. Yeah. Excellent. Are any of you using uh, the uh, Boomtown yet? We have it integrated with PowerPoint, but um, as far as like leads coming off of listings, those funnel into PowerPoint, but um, we've toyed around with, um, <laughs> if Haley was in here, she could speak a little more to that. Um, you know, I, I just know that I, I've, watch some boomtown uh invoices come through and like yeah well, what are we doing here but um <laughs> <laughs> so i don't know <laughs> we, well, it brings we, up it, it brings up a good point that you mentioned haley can speak a lot more to that and i think um what have you challenged has it been challenging or how did you transition into uh well, we'll may say delegation or letting go because i know sometimes that's challenging for a team leader well, it's not challenging for me because I, I hate that stuff. I just want to like sell houses and talk to people and like go get coffees, beers and lunches. Um, and so, um, and th th that's where kind of the yin and yang of where Haley fills in where I'm, you know, not so great or not as talented and, you know, where they, they pick up on more of, uh, personal traits that I'm missing and they um, have more of Haley really fills in on um, and, and she has free reign to sit there and say hey we need to be doing this I think we should slide our budget into this and um, you know I trust her she has pretty much full yeah. autonomy to do what she needs to do now she will take some feedback from the girls and as well um, but uh, yeah, I have no problem delegating. Do it all the time. Got to. <laughs> and how about uh, you, Mr. Doris? Any challenge or was there any shift when you moved to a team or sometimes letting go and delegating? Yeah, I mean, I think that's something that takes a minute to get good at and feel good about doing. But I think one thing with our team that we work on is trying to utilize everybody with what they're best at. So whatever your best at, where you're making the most money per hour and the things that you're not good at, let's find somebody who is good at that so that um, the client gets the best treatment in each phase of whatever it is, whether they're buying or selling or it's the inspection report or, you know, just utilizing the team for whoever's best at those situations. It Ted, one more thing that like helps with delegating is um, Doris said something about determining what your time is worth an hour. That's a big one that your mom really had me latch onto is determining like, hey, is this a three or $400 an hour activity? And if it's not, then you need to figure something out. 
And then the backbone of delegation, in my opinion, is like writing your business out and spelling out exactly what you do and then putting um, guidelines of how that happens. So if there's a framework, delegation becomes super easy, very mindless, and you can truly disconnect because you know that there's parameters to operate within. Yeah. And it's so easy to hand it off at that point. Yeah, I, I love that because I think it makes it easy. What you were speaking to, um, Rachel, was everybody understanding who, who the role is. And like, that's why I didn't name my, tid, my team the Ted Pins team. I noticed both of you have independent names because it's like they want to know where's Gary Ashton. Well, Gary Ashton hasn't written a contract. Call Gary Ashton. <laughs> what was that? Do not call Gary Ashton. It says it in all his listings. <laughs> exactly like do not call so so um having a you know I, i'm not into org charts or hierarchies but like you say have have some clear roles like you're the contact point for this and explain who's going to take over you know for this it um it really helps and then nobody's getting miffed they know where their territory and boundaries are and you you put it in their hands and then like you said Haley gets to call the shots in those areas and and she's um you know i was when i was running a team immediately I was looking for somebody to run the show, right? Somebody else needed to be in charge of operations because some of our best skills I know too with you, Doris, is it's sales, right? It's relationships, it's networking and, and, and it's sales. And so managing the team aspect, there's other people that can be great at that. And, and I think for those that are listening and, and, you know, if you want to figure out what you make an hour, just take what you made and divide it by how many weeks and days and hours. And there you go. That's how, that's how rudimentary and, and it can get to see what's your time worth and uh, could you be doing something? Now the challenge is make sure you're doing something when you're delegating. So if you get, if you get rid of a $30 an hour job, that doesn't mean you just don't do anything with your hour that you gain. All right, we're wrapping up here. Um, Allison, how do you balance all the demands of this career? Ooh, <laughs> good one. Um, I think that's something I'm still definitely learning. I think when you, especially with development, um, you, you kind of throw yourself into that when you're enjoying it and you're trying to like, you know, do the best job you can, it can be really hard to balance when you're just answering the phone and running around. Um, but for me, um, I think it's just making sure that I spend time with like family and friends and like literally leave my phone in the car sometimes is something I do recently because you can't like, I'm just really bad at unplugging. So that's just something that I've started doing is shutting my phone in the car for like an hour if I'm with family or friends. Um, and that way I can feel a little more connected. Um, and this year, I think because it's been a little bit different has helped me like kind of reframe the way I think about you know, my work life balance, um, kind of like everybody's probably feeling, but yeah. That's a great tip though. Thank you. Like, Cause I know for me, honestly, if it's in my possession or my eyesight, I'm going to check it. Yeah. Okay. For sure. Love that. Um, Alyssa, anything else or from, from you as far as, or anything from you as far as how you manage this madness? Um, I'm still working on it too. It's kind of like a never ending battle. You just have to like train yourself because it is easier to just like go through your emails and feel better at the end. And there's kind of like that addiction where you just like, to answer all your emails and get out of the way but like what allison says like keep your phone like at a distance so you're not just like constantly seeing things pop up or phone calls and a lot of the times like with developments people want to like go on the weekends and stuff and i would literally just drop everything and run over to showing and having like time set aside where i'm not going to take showings or like find someone else on the team who is more available just like delegating that to someone else if I need personal time. <laughs> yeah, It's hard, right? Because there's, there can be so many leads and you feel like if we don't answer this phone, we're going to miss it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. How about, uh, how about the house fitters team? How do you all manage this madness personally, professionally, socially, alcoholically? <laughs> Um, I think like time blocking is also like a great tool to use and just knowing kind of like your nine to five and David's really good at 
you know, six, he kind of shuts down and like, this is like my personal time and like for dinner and family and friends. And then, you know, you will call or text or whatever the next day at like 8 a.m. So just time blocking and kind of making it like your nine to five um, and then taking the evenings and the morning for yourself. Yeah, knowing the world won't end if you don't <laughs> yeah. respond to someone's email at 9 p.m. and that it will still be there. That was a struggle with y'all at the beginning. Yeah. I'm like, it's, <laughs> it's going to be us. fine. Like, yeah. you know, I, I just see it with so many other agents. They're like, I've got to, like, you know, get onto this person about these repairs tonight. But like, they're not going to do these repairs at 8 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. Like, it'll be there in the morning. It's fine. Like, just throw that phone away and, and enjoy the rest of your night. Yeah. But you know, you've got a good team members that are at least that it's in their heart, right? They want to take it and get it done. So yeah, I love that. Yeah. It's wonderful though to see. And, and one of the things that I've talked about with Rebecca that we're think, considering changing is, is putting in all of our counter offers and special stipulations that the time as stipulated in the contract is not for deadlines is not 1159. It is 559. Because the truth is they can still have you up till 1159 waiting to get you something that needs to get a signature the deal falls apart you like it david i like that i'm okay. taking that <laughs> take it because i think we need to start putting some reasonable deadlines because unfortunately both parties have the right in which to negotiate till 1159 and it's bs that with 859 959 there's documents still outstanding that somebody's got to log in while your child's taking its first steps and get a signature it's just bananas all right, pass it on. 559, folks. New deadlines. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, all right, well, it's 1121. Uh, what are you – we need some predictions here. It's time to, it's time to spill it a little bit because, you know, only 1% of the advice you give people will take. What do you – Doris, what's your prediction for the health of our market in Nashville in the next 12 months? What's going to happen? I think Nashville's a – going to be a big winner of all the corona stuff i think that we're seeing a lot of people move here um amazon's a big winner in corona so i think that nashville will remain in a good spot keep growing if interest rates stay low uh, i think it could really go crazy but uh yeah i think i think nashville's i think nashville's going to come out of this in a good spot What's the hot new area you're, uh, we should be paying attention to that we're not? Donaldson. Like it. Binkley, what's going to happen? I think we're going to keep trucking. I mean, we're, we are the big winner coming out of Corona. Like we're all seeing people come in from big cities that are um, excited about having the same luxuries and amenities and entertainment, but not being as dense. Um, I think some of the big winner, like I wouldn't say the big winner are markets that so much is just type of product. I'm noticing a lot more people, especially with a little healthier budget or after homes that are a little more all in one, like pool, entertainments, multiple living space, um, acreage um, space I'm noticing that that might be a new thing we see um, starting to show farms more I've never really done that which is odd but fun so nice any area you think's hot that we need to watch mm, um, or anyone on your team that's probably I think it, just heading due north, like White's Creek, Trinity Lane, um, that area is just so unique and makes so much sense on a map. Um, yeah. Pretty interesting. I love it. I love it. Any other questions? Say about, uh, about your time, people's time management in this crazy business. I think you always got to have a trip out in the future plan. It's something to look forward to and it really like motivates you to get to that and i think when you don't have something out in the future you can just get in this rat race and wake up three months later yeah burnt out at a bar you know one <laughs> percent 
right? You're buried under three lock boxes and four signs and just right, wishing. Right. I'm going to take it away. Yeah, we used to do uh, with my team, we had bucket lists. We did it in a Google sheet. And so everybody could see each other's bucket lists. And once a month, uh, we would hope that people would add stuff or we'd ask that they add 10 a month if they could. Um, and we wanted to know what everybody was playing for. Because part of on your team, like if I don't know your why, I don't necessarily know how to support your, or, you know, what you're working for. And so, you know, you don't have to be on a team to have that. Those listening, if you don't, if you're not on a team, you have a team, they're on this call. Uh, if you don't know them, introduce yourself or, um, you know, within our company and beyond, but create accountability with people and know what you're playing for. And I tell that with, uh, you know, even people looking for jobs, if you don't spread what you're trying to do, and I say this with buyer's agents as well, you got to tell clients how they can help you. And you got to make it real specific to train them how to give you the referrals. Um, so, David, thank you, uh, Doris, for, for sharing that. I think it's very important to have something you're looking forward to, um, be it a trip or something like that. All right. Uh, any other parting thoughts? That's all, uh, that's all I have on deck for today. Any, any questions you want to put in the chat or uh, final words that we should know from, from uh, the house fitters team? No? What do you all project you're going to sell as a team this year, do you think? That's a big secret, Ted. All right, well, we'll, we'll, we'll look for it. We'll look for it. And um, how about uh, Urban Team? Any parting thoughts, new developments coming soon, open houses we need to know about? I'm just kidding. Uh, Silo West, we're about to release probably in the next two weeks. Um, Riverwalk, we just released, what, 11 new houses there? 20. 20 new houses there. <laughs> how do you go and get, how do you get development? Some people want to know about developments or, or, you know, they think that that's, how'd you get into developments and how do you land them? Two minutes. Uh, I got into, it's, I've always been doing it. Um, so that's how I got into it. I don't really even, I was on Mark's team, I was selling them and then just kind of grew into understanding them uh from the standpoint of doing it as a list agent uh it it's a ton of work it has a long lifespan and you, you got to have multiple people to do things it's not like one listing you have to have a whole plan to to get them all sold by the time that they're finished so the developer isn't sitting there holding the bag so i, I just think really believing in that there's enough to go around and bringing on people to help you if, if you come across something that you think could work uh, you know, call, call us or call anybody that you think is good at that and get to be a part of one or two. Cause I think that sometimes you think you want to do it, but when people really get into it, they don't want to do it. Yeah. I mean, people look at like this broad West thing that Zach's doing the amount of work to pull something off that, pull that off is you, you, you cannot comprehend the amount of hours that go into getting to the sale and the closings to get paid. It is yeah, they've been a working on that for two and a half years. I mean, we worked on silo for three years before we ever saw a paycheck. Which we knew and believed that the paychecks would come, but you just, there, there's a lot of that. Um, and there's been times, right? You don't know, I mean, in Icon or some of those developments, you could have a market crash in the middle and the, the project can go belly up and all that money spent. I mean, there's a lot of risk to that. Right. So you got to kind of hit the business from all sides, but I think, I think it's really important as, as you're hearing and seeing, and I appreciate all of you taking all the time to share some of the, the insides and pain you've gone through, but is, uh, is the power of a team and what you all can accomplish collectively is beyond what necessarily you may do individually. And most importantly, the speed at which you can do it, right? Just learning so fast and being able to, to service people so well. Uh, it's a testament to, to the success of your businesses. So thank you both so much. Let's give them some love, everybody. We'll see you in the streets. Urban team, head to head. Thank you all. Appreciate you. Bye. Bye. Have a good one.